Я не понимаю. I cannot understand. Что ты за странный человек? What strange manner of man are you? Если водишься с зелеными людьми. That you consort with the green men. Хотя твое обличие такое, как у людей моей расы. Though your form is that of my race. И при этом цвет кожи лишь немного темнее, чем у белой обезьяны. While your color is little darker than that of the white ape. Скажи мне, ты человек или больше, чем человек? Tell me, are you human, or are you more than human? Это необычная история, ответил я. It is a strange tale, I replied. Слишком длинная, чтобы пытаться рассказать тебе теперь. Too long to attempt to tell you now. И такая в правдоподобии которой я и сам сомневаюсь так сильно. And one which I so much doubt the credibility of myself. Что не осмеливаюсь надеяться, что другие поверят в нее. That I fear to hope that others will believe it. Достаточно того на данный момент. Suffice it, for the present. Что я твой друг. That I am your friend. И настолько, насколько позволят наши захватчики. And, so far as our captors will permit. Твой защитник и твой слуга. Your protector and your servant. Значит, ты тоже пленник? Then you too are a prisoner. Но от чего тогда это оружие и регалии таркианского вождя? But why, then, those arms and the regalia of a Tharkian chieftain? Как тебя зовут? What is your name? Где твоя страна? Where your country? Да, даже Торис, я тоже пленник. Yes, Deja Thoris, I too am a prisoner. Мое имя Джон Картер, и я называю Виргинию, один из штатов Америки, земля своим домом. My name is John Carter, and I claim Virginia, one of the United States of America, Earth, as my home. Но почему мне позволено носить оружие, я не знаю.
but why I am permitted to wear arms I do not know. Также я не знал, что мои регалии это регалии вождя. Nor was I aware that my regalia was that of a chieftain. На этом месте наш разговор был прерван. We were interrupted at this juncture. Появлением одного из воинов. By the approach of one of the warriors. Который нес оружие, амуницию и украшения. Bearing arms, accoutrements and ornaments. И мгновенно на один из ее вопросов был получен ответ. And in a flash one of her questions was answered. И загадка для меня разъяснилась. And a puzzle cleared up for me. Я увидел, что тело моего мертвого противника было раздето. I saw that the body of my dead antagonist had been stripped. Я узнал в угрожающем и все же уважительном отношении воина. And I read in the menacing yet respectful attitude of the warrior. который принес мне эти трофеи убийства, Who had brought me these trophies of the kill? ту же манеру поведения, которую проявил тот другой воин. The same demeanor as that evinced by the other. который принес мне мое первое снаряжение. Who had brought me my original equipment? И теперь впервые я осознал, что мой удар And now for the first time I realized that my blow Во время моей первой схватки в зале аудиенции повлек за собой смерть моего противника. On the occasion of my first battle in the audience chamber had resulted in the death of my adversary. Причина всего того отношения, проявляемого ко мне, теперь была очевидна. The reason for the whole attitude displayed toward me was now apparent. Я, так сказать, получил признание. I had won my spurs, so to speak. И согласно примитивной справедливости, которая всегда отличает поведение марсиан, and in the crude justice, which always marks Martian dealings. и которая, среди прочего, побудила меня назвать ее планетой парадоксов,
and which, among other things, has caused me to call her the planet of paradoxes. Мне были пожалованы почести, полагающиеся победителю. I was accorded the honors due a conqueror. Атрибуты и ранг человека, которого я убил. The trappings and the position of the man I killed. В действительности я был марсианским вождем. In truth, I was a Martian chieftain. И это, как я узнал позже, было причиной моей большой свободы и того, что мне дозволили присутствовать в зале для аудиенций. And this, I learned later was the cause of my great freedom and my toleration in the audience chamber. Когда я повернулся, чтобы получить имущество мертвого воина, as I had turned to receive the dead warrior's chattels, Я заметил, что Тар Старкас и несколько других воинов спешат к нам. I had noticed that Tars Tarkas and several others had pushed forward toward us. А глаза последнего смотрели на меня самым вопросительным образом. And the eyes of the former rested upon me in a most quizzical manner. Наконец, он обратился ко мне. Finally, he addressed me. Ты говоришь на языке Барсума достаточно бегло. You speak the tongue of Barsoom quite readily. Для того, кто был глух и ним по отношению к нам всего несколько дней назад. For one who was deaf and dumb to us a few short days ago. Где ты выучил его, Джон Картер? Where did you learn it, John Carter? Ты, ты сам отвечаешь за это, Тар Старкас, я ответил. You, yourself, are responsible, Tars Tarkas, I replied. так как ты предоставил мне учительницу с поразительными способностями. In that you furnished me with an instructress of remarkable ability. Я должен поблагодарить Солу за мое обучение. I have to thank Sola for my learning. Она весьма преуспела, ответил он. She has done well, he answered. Но твое обучение в других отношениях требует значительного совершенствования.
but your education in other respects needs considerable polish." Ты знаешь, чего бы тебе стоила твоя беспримерная смелость? Do you know what your unprecedented temerity would have cost you? Если бы тебе не удалось убить любого из двух вождей, чьи знаки различия ты теперь носишь? Had you failed to kill either of the two chieftains whose medal you now wear? Я полагаю, что тот, кого я не смог бы убить. I presume that that one whom I had failed to kill. Убил бы меня, ответил я, улыбаясь. Would have killed me, I answered, smiling. Нет, ты ошибаешься. No, you are wrong. Только в самом крайнем случае самообороны марсианский воин убьет пленника. Only in the last extremity of self-defense would a Martian warrior kill a prisoner. Мы предпочитаем приберегать их для других целей. We like to save them for other purposes. И выражение его лица намекало на такие возможности, размышлять о которых было неприятно. And his face bespoke possibilities that were not pleasant to dwell upon. Но теперь тебя может спасти еще одно. But one thing can save you now. Если ты в знак признания твоей замечательной доблести, свирепости и мастерства, should you, in recognition of your remarkable valor, ferocity, and prowess, Будешь признан Талом Хаджусом, достойным служить ему. Be considered by Tall Hages as worthy of his service. То тебя могут принять в общину. You may be taken into the community. и ты станешь полноправным таркианцем. And become a full-fledged Tharkian. Пока мы не достигнем резиденции Тала Хаджуса, Until we reach the headquarters of Tall Hages. Воля Лорква Септомеля такова, что тебе будет оказано уважение, которое ты заслужил своими действиями. It is the will of Lorqua's PTO Mel that you be accorded the respect your acts have earned you. Мы будем обращаться с тобой как с таркианским вождем.
You will be treated by us as a Tharkian chieftain. Но ты не должен забывать, что каждый вождь, который выше тебя по званию, But you must not forget that every chief who ranks you. Отвечает за твою безопасную доставку к нашему могущественнейшему и жесточайшему повелителю. Is responsible for your safe delivery to our mighty and most ferocious ruler. И я закончил. I am done. Я услышал тебя, Тар Старкас. I hear you, Tars Tarkas. Как ты знаешь, я не с Барсума. As you know, I am not of Barsum. Твои обычаи – это не мои обычаи. Your ways are not my ways. И я могу поступать в будущем только так, как я поступал в прошлом. And I can only act in the future as I have in the past. В соответствии с велениями моей совести. In accordance with the dictates of my conscience. И руководимой нормами поведения моего собственного народа. And guided by the standards of mine own people. Если ты оставишь меня в покое, я уйду с миром. If you will leave me alone, I will go in peace. И если же нет, то пусть каждый марсумианец, с которым мне придется иметь дело, But if not, let the individual Barsumians with whom I must deal. Либо уважает мои права как чужеземца среди вас. Either respect my rights as a stranger among you. Либо будет готов принять все возможные последствия, которые могут выпасть на его долю. Or take whatever consequences may befall. В одном мы должны быть уверены. Of one thing let us be sure. Каковы бы ни были твои окончательные намерения в отношении этой несчастной молодой женщины, whatever may be your ultimate intentions toward this unfortunate young woman, кто бы ни попытался ранить или оскорбить ее в будущем, Whoever would offer her injury or insult in the future. Должен принять во внимание, что ему полностью придется держать ответ передо мной. Must figure on making a full accounting to me. И я понимаю, что вы не придаете значения таким чувствам, как великодушие и доброта.
I understand that you belittle all sentiments of generosity and kindliness. Но не я, и я могу убедить вашего самого доблестного воина. But I do not, and I can convince your most doughty warrior. Что эти свойства вполне сочетаются со способностью сражаться. That these characteristics are not incompatible with an ability to fight. Обычно я не предрасположен к длинным речам. Ordinarily I am not given to long speeches. И никогда раньше я не прибегал к напыщенности. Nor ever before had I descended to bombast. Но я угадал основной тон. But I had guessed at the keynote. который заденет ответ на струну в душах зеленых марсиан. Which would strike an answering chord in the breasts of the green Martians. И я не ошибся. Nor was I wrong. Так как моя страстная речь, по всей очевидности, произвела на них глубокое впечатление. For my harangue evidently deeply impressed them. И их отношение ко мне после этого стало еще более уважительным. And their attitude toward me thereafter was still further respectful. Даже сам Тар Старка, сказалось, был удовлетворен моим ответом. Tars Tarkas himself seemed pleased with my reply. Но его единственное замечание было до некоторой степени загадочным. But his only comment was more or less enigmatical. Я думаю, что я знаю Тала Хаджуса Джеда Катарка. And I think I know Tall Hages, Jeddak of Thark. Теперь я обратил свое внимание на Дежу Торис. I now turned my attention to Deja Thoris. И помогая ей встать на ноги. And assisting her to her feet. Я повернулся вместе с ней по направлению к выходу. I turned with her toward the exit. Не обращая внимания на ее стражниц, подобных парящим гарпиям. Ignoring her hovering guardian harpies. А также на вопросительные взгляды вождей. As well as the inquiring glances of the chieftains. Но разве я не был теперь тоже вождем? 
Was I not now a chieftain also? Что ж, я возьму на себя обязанности вождя. Well, then, I would assume the responsibilities of one. Они не препятствовали нам. They did not molest us. Итак, Дежи Торис, принцесса Гелиума, и Джон Картер, джентльмен из Вирджинии. And so Deja Thoris, Princess of Helium, and John Carter, Gentleman of Virginia. Сопровождаемые верным вулой. Followed by the faithful Wula. Вышли при полном молчании из зала для аудиенции Лорко Саптомили Джеда среди тарков Барсума. Passed through utter silence from the audience chamber of Lorqua's PTO Mel, Jed among the Tharks of Barsoom. I cannot understand. What strange manner of man are you, that you consort with the green men? though your form is that of my race, while your color is little darker than that of the white ape. Tell me, are you human, or are you more than human?" "'It is a strange tale,' I replied, too long to attempt to tell you now, and one which I so much doubt the credibility of myself that I fear to hope that others will believe it. Suffice it for the present that I am your friend and so far as your captors will permit, your protector and your servant. Then you too are a prisoner? But why then those arms and the regalia of a Tharkian chieftain? What is your name? Where your country? Yes, Deja Thoris, I too am a prisoner. My name is John Carter, and I claim Virginia, one of the United States of America, Earth, as my home but why I am permitted to wear arms I do not know, nor was I aware that my regalia was that of a chieftain. We were interrupted at this juncture by the approach of one of the warriors, bearing arms, accoutrements, and ornaments, and in a flash one of her questions was answered, and a puzzle cleared up for me. I saw that the body of my dead antagonist had been stripped and I read in the menacing yet respectful attitude of the warrior who had brought me these trophies of the kill the same demeanor as that evinced by the other who had brought me my original equipment. And now for the first time I realized that my blow, on the occasion of my first battle in the audience chamber, had resulted in the death of my adversary. The reason for the whole attitude displayed toward me was now apparent. I had won my spurs, so to speak, and in the crude justice which always marks Martian dealings, and which, among other things, has caused me to call her the planet of paradoxes, I was accorded the honors due a conqueror, the trappings and the position of the man I killed. In truth, I was a Martian chieftain, and this I learned later was the cause of my great freedom and my toleration in the audience chamber. As I turned to receive the dead warrior's chattels, I had noticed that Tars Tarkas and several others had pushed forward toward us, and the eyes of the former rested upon me in a most quizzical manner. Finally he addressed me. "'You speak the tongue of Barsoom quite readily for one who was deaf and dumb to us a few short days ago. Where did you learn it, John Carter?' "'You yourself are responsible, Tars Tarkas,' I replied in that you furnished me with an instructress of remarkable ability. 
I have to thank Sola for my learning. She has done well, he answered, but your education in other respects needs considerable polish. Do you know that your unprecedented temerity would have cost you had you failed to kill either of the two chieftains whose medal you now wear? I presume that the one whom I had failed to kill would have killed me, I answered, smiling. No, you are wrong. Only in the extremity of self-defense would a Martian warrior kill a prisoner. We like to save them for other purposes. And his face bespoke possibilities that were not pleasant to dwell upon. But one thing can save you now, he continued, should you, in recognition of your remarkable valor, ferocity, and prowess, be considered by Tal Hajus as worthy of his service, you may be taken into the community and become a full-fledged Tharkian. Until we reach the headquarters of Tal Hajus, it is the will of Lord Quastomel that you be accorded the respect your acts have earned you. You will be treated by us as a Tharkian chieftain. But you must not forget that every chief who ranks you is responsible for your safe delivery to our mighty and most ferocious ruler. I am done. I hear you, Tars Tarkas, I answered. As you know, I am not of Barsoom. Your ways are not my ways, and I can act only in the future as I have in the past, in accordance with the dictates of my conscience and guided by the standards of my own people. If you will leave me alone, I will go in peace. But if not, let the individual Barsoomians with whom I must deal either respect my rights as a stranger among you, or take whatever consequences may befall. Of one thing, let us be sure. Whatever may be your ultimate intentions toward this unfortunate young woman, whoever would offer her injury or insult in the future, must figure on making a full accounting to me. I understand that you belittle all sentiments of generosity and kindliness, but I do not, and I can convince your most doughty warrior that these characteristics are not incompatible with an ability to fight. Ordinarily I am not given to long speeches, nor ever before had I descended to bombast, but I had guessed at the keynote which would strike an answering chord in the breasts of the green Martians nor was I wrong, for my harangue evidently deeply impressed them, and their attitude toward me thereafter was still further respectful. Tars Tarkas himself seemed pleased with my reply, but his only comment was more or less enigmatical. And I think I know Tal Hajus, Jeddak of Thok. I now turned my attention to Deja Thoris, and assisting her to her feet, I turned with her toward the exit, ignoring her hovering guardian harpies as well as the inquiring glances of the chieftains. Was I not now a chieftain also? Well, then, I would assume the responsibilities of one. They did not molest us, and so Deja Thoris, Princess of Helium, and John Carter, Gentleman of Virginia, followed by the faithful Woola, passed through utter silence from the audience chamber of Lorquas Tomel, Jed, among the Tharks of Barsoom. A Princess of Mars by Edgar Rice Burroughs Read by Mark Nelson This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, visit LibriVox.org.